Hey everybody, today we're going to do look at um, Hattori Dwarf once more. I would like to say that this deck, I think it's too weak right now to be competitive. I'm only getting like a 50% win rate with it. Considering that I'm pretty good at Squytel, I don't think 50% is good enough. Uh, this first player I'm up against um, sacrifices too much card advantage to win round one. The important thing is not to overcommit. Know when you lose. Even if you put in a lot of resources into a single round, don't don't try it. So once he plays that, it's a low tempo card, uh, Priscilla. I take advantage of that and just pass. I get three card advantage over him going into the next round, and um, I have a resilient dwarf on the board. I don't expect to get all my dwarfs onto the board this round because I expect him to pass instantly. However, I have a good old Yarpin, and because I start off round. Um, three, um, I can easily just play a dwarf and boost up Yarpin. I decided to do deck thinning for some reason, it's not really important. None of the cards I'm playing right now are going to be heavily impacted. Um, having as much units protected by armor is going to be effective against an opponent that might have armor boosting abilities. I am not quite sure what my opponent did with the shrooms because I had stuff that was buffed so he could have used it against me. So he resets the Arpin which is confusing to me. Okay. He gets a Shackles, he puts it on my Dwarf, uh, my Zoltan Shive, which is a mistake. It allows me to um, decoy him to buff up my stuff. Now I could have probably done better things with my leader ability, I just wanted to show off a bit. And because my opponent has... Uh, one of the reasons why I took out the Crow's Eye was just in case my opponent had a third Crow's Eye in their hand, that would have weakened it by pulling it out of their graveyard. That's the reason why I did that. Okay, in our next game, we're up against another um, Radovid. This Radovid player is playing a different strategy. They're going for Unit Swarm. I think that um, Northern Realms has a lot of deck thinning for their bronzes, and that puts them ahead of Scoia'tael, which kind of struggles to control their deck thinning properly. I think enough players know. So I'm gonna I'm gonna do the opposite of what my opponent did in last game and sacrifice some card advantage, but in this case I'm not going to be three cards below and I have two resilient units going onto the board into the next round. I'm gonna keep my hand because there are cards I don't want to draw and just pass instantly. Okay, my opponent thins their deck some more. There's no real reason to uh, push out a round against Northern Realms. I force out some of their stronger uh, card abilities. My opponent's gonna make a mistake when they um, reset one of my units with Margarita. They're going to select a unit that isn't as strong. Um, well, it hasn't been buffed as much. So you might notice Barkley Ellis has a two base strength. So he has a misleading amount of power. So my opponent gets a really bad Mahakaman Ale out. They could have avoided that easily. So they decide to get my uh, ra my Ranger for instead of Hatori. Hatori, I'm not Hatori. Um, Barkley Elves. Barkley Elves. If they had reset it, would have been nine points. Instead, they got like six. Overdorse is weak if you have a bunch of armor. Um, 
The reason why I went with armor is that overdose was popular when I was recording this. By the way, um, by the time that this comes out, I think CD Projekt Red will have their uh, Q3 out, and I'll start analyzing that and making a video for that. Hopefully before I go off on my vacation. Um, I'm leaving on Sunday and be for Thanksgiving. That'll be fun. Okay, I win round one. This is one of my favorite games. Um, notice that they did steal my Yarpin. One of the things that has been bothering me a lot about Dwarf is there was a lot of people playing Muzzle. Now that decreased significantly as I ra rose in ranks because what happens if a person uh, muzzle becomes a dead card? Then there's a problem. There are some cards that muzzles are really good against, uh, like Yarpin. I actually know what my opponent's strategy is. The moment I see this giant fiend on the board, I'm like, okay. You showed off that ghoul to me. I know exactly what you're up to. Um, they gave me a very good card to steal from their graveyard called Mandrake Root. I actually had to, um, I actually opened the keg to get Mandrake Root after this. I'm not very good with against weather right now, in my opinion. I always make the same mistakes. I'm gonna pull these three things out of the weather. Could have done that earlier. Got him to play uh, two weathers against me. So. He eats a ghoul, which spawns a ghoul, which allows him to pull a ghoul onto the board. And that ghoul eats one of his lesser important cards. I'm waiting to steal his Mandrake root from his graveyard. He eats i uh, I'm not using Hattori anymore, so I don't really mind him um, eating stuff from my graveyard. I'm con contemplating whether or not I should show my hand with Aglius. Okay. Now I get to uh, emote, because I get to be all smug about this. And uh, that's a pretty OP um, Aglius. It's not the biggest play I have ever had against monsters. I think the most power I've ever used a Mandrake root for was to remove, I think, 80 points from the board, something like that. <sighs> um, you'll see it in one of my videos when I hit rank 17. That's the video that it happens in. I don't like. I don't deserve this victory. Okay, I'm. Anytime I don't have my Yarpin um, muzzled is a good day for me. <laughs> it means I'm probably gonna win, in my opinion. My opponent's really heavy on the weather. I happen to have all my uh, Elven Mercenaries in my hand, funnily enough. I'm going to start buffing stuff up. The reason why I'm pushing this um, round hard is that my opponent probably has some Priestess of Frey in their hand, and I'm taking advantage of that. Uh, there was a mistake here. Um, I could have easily just pulled everything onto one row. I was worried about the potentiality of my opponent having Um, lacerates, so I didn't want to pull everything onto that, but again, I should have just made the front row a fewer units. Anyways, I end up having uh, playing the dwarf. This is great. My opponent isn't playing any carryover. Um, meaningful carryover, that is. So, I mean, dwarf's great. Uh, I push out the sage. I'm gonna play the dwarf just because it's resilient, might as well. He uses uh, Azure's Thunder to get rid of it, but. That still means he has to play another card, so I'm happy. I'm going to push out the Thunderbolt Potion. I'm going to steal his Azure's Thunder, get rid of that bear immediately. So his strategy relies on it, after all. Final game is up against an Aridin. Monsters are really the beginner class. They have the 
highest skill floor and the lowest skill, well, one of the lower skill ceilings. We have a, de a decent skill ceiling, is a better way to put it. This deck doesn't have very any removal. I should have probably used um, Zoltan Shive immediately, as opposed to clearing the weather, so that he could play two weathers before I uh, cleared them. Because the sooner you clear the weather, um, you want to clear multiple weathers with your card, is what I'm trying to say. Because weather decks play multiple weathers, so... So, I'm just going to pass here because my opponent put three weathers on the board. Dealing, um, it's, it's an uphill battle the moment that you're dealing with that many um, weathers. Okay. I got Hattori, so I'm happy. I'm going to play my resilient unit into his resilient unit if I want to. Buffs up my uh, Yarpin. Uh, I can clear that weather. It allows me to go into the next round with more uh, a stronger resilient unit if I clear the weather. Okay, now I'm going to use his own weather against him. I can't pass because I lost the first round. I still have all my uh, <laughs> I have all my Blue Mountain Commandos. I have a tendency to forget what they're called. Here I'm going to make a few mistakes. The mistake I make is um, once I see that I should play not my Dwarven Defender, the Hawkman Defender, but I should play my Saskia Dragon form. Why? Because having the two dwarfs puts it up to 12, and if it was 11 it wouldn't die to um, Villain Trettenmath, Daddy. Um, because I can use the Sage to buff up one of his Wild Hunt Hounds. We all make mistakes, so it happens. Hope you guys enjoyed that. I still won the game just because of the differential, but because his unit would die with my unit, it ends up that I had to have more, enough points to win. Hope you guys have a good day.